Okay, children. Today we have to do a poem, a very very interesting poem written by a renowned poet Wordsworth. Let's first read the background. This poem is written by the famous English poet William Wordsworth. I'm sure you all must have heard his name. He was born in the beautiful Lake District of England in the year 1770. From his early days, he was very fond of flowers, birds, lakes, rivers, rocks and trees. He used to spend much time enjoying their beauty. He used to take long tours on foot and visit the beautiful natural scenes which he loved so much. He started a new kind of poetry written in simple words about natural objects and simple country people. He died in 1850. This is his background. Let me add a few words or rather sentences additional to this paragraph. He was known as the, one of the best known poets who wrote poetry on nature. He belonged to the Romantic period and here romance means love for nature. So most of his poetry the subject would be nature. Secondly, something worth noting is he used to mostly write about his early, early childhood days when he used to visit places of scenic beauty and he also refers or rather recollects those scenes in his later part of life. Now let's start the poem. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills. I wandered lonely as a cloud. If you look up into the sky, children, you will see pieces of clouds floating here and there, all by themselves. So he tries to compare himself to a lonely cloud that moves about here and there. And it floats. And where does it go? It moves over the valleys and hills. At that moment, when all at once, I saw a cloud, a host of golden daffodils. When he was wandering around like a cloud, that cloud floats over rails and valleys and hills. Similarly, he was wandering on the hillside and the plains around. He suddenly noticed a crowd, a host, what did he see? A host of, a crowd of golden daffodils. This is a flower grown into the English countryside. They are bell shaped and yellowish in color. And he calls them as crowd and host because he considered them as a good company. This And where were they growing? Beside the lake beneath the trees and what were they doing fluttering and dancing in the breeze breeze is the air that blows and in this breeze they were moving here and there to and fro backward and forward so he thinks that those flowers in the strong breeze were fluttering and dancing. Is the first stanza clear to you all? 
Now let's read the second one. <clears throat> he further describes the scene in the next in this stanza. How were they growing? And how many were they? Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way. Just like if you look up into the sky, you will see innumerable, uncountable stars that are present in the Milky Way, that is in the sky. They are continuous, uncountable. This is what he is trying to compare the daffodils with the stars. They stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. They were growing along the side of the bay. And as far as the poet could see, the line was never-ending. They stretched as far as he could see. Ten thousand saw I at a glance. This is what he thinks, that he saw ten thousand of them in a glance, in a glimpse. Tossing their heads in spiky dance, again to show how cheerful they looked, he says that they were tossing their heads. As I told you earlier, because of the breeze, they were fluttering and dancing, moving here and there, to and fro. So again, to emphasize on the same thing, he says they were tossing their heads in sprightly dance, as if they were very happy, sprightly, happy dance. Is it clear? Now, on to the third stanza. The waves beside them danced. Now, in the first two stanzas, he told us where he saw, where was he, what was he doing, all of a sudden what did he see, how many were they, and how were they behaving, how they were moving. It appeared that they were very happy and they were dancing. They were countless. And in a, just one glance that he gave, he felt as if he had seen 10,000 of them. Now in the third stanza, he is going to compare them to something else now. The waves beside them dance. Now where did the waves come from? Because they were growing at the margin of a bay. So they were waves. And the waves of the bay also danced because of the breeze. But they, and who are these they? Daffodils. They outdid. Outdid means surpassed. Defeated them. Beat them. Outdid the sparkling waves and glee. Although the, when the sun shines and the sun rays fall on the water, the waves shine as if they are happy, glee, happy. A poet could not but be gay. Now looking at such a beautiful sight, Wordsworth says, what could a poet do except to be happy? Why so happy? In such a jocund company. Jocund? Joyful. happy company. A poet had no choice except to be happy to see, to be in the company, in the pleasant company of these daffodils. So what did he do? I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. So he kept on looking at them continuously. I gazed and gazed, but he had no idea that what a great happiness, wealth here does not mean money, the wealth of happiness. This scene was 
had brought to him. He had no idea. He realizes this later on. All right, children. Now we go on to the next page. Now what is very, very important over here, as we did the first three stanzas, they were all about his past. What he had seen as a youth, and how he had admired. That, that was all about his past. But the last stanza is about his present. Because here he is trying to recollect what he had seen many years back and how he had felt. First let's read the stanza, then I will further explain that to you. For oft when on my couch I lie, in waking or in pensive mood. Here Wordsworth is trying to say, oft means often, whenever he lies on his couch, whenever he has nothing to do in his vacant hours, or when he is in a mood to think, to meditate, or just to think deeply, that is pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye. Who are they? The daffodils. They flash upon means he recollects them. That inward eye is his memory. In his memory, he can recollect those daffodils. Which is the bliss of solitude? Which is the bliss of solitude? Which is the when you are happy in your empty hours, in your lonely hours. When you are alone, they give you that happiness. These, the memory of these flowers are a blessing, a happy happiness, source of happiness. When you are all by yourself, solitude, when you are lonely. And then what happens to the poet? And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. That means when he recollects, when in his memory he remembers that scene, his heart is filled with pleasure. And it seems as if his heart is dancing along with the daffodils. 